What's up guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. All right, today we're going to take a look at our single side isolation RPO concepts, all right? So we're talking about our isolation play off of our Veer scheme. We are a, uh, a Veer team, not a, a zone team if you've watched any of our videos in the past. All right, so our, our RPOs on our isolation play are actually the front side of our Veer scheme. It would probably be the back side of your zone scheme. If you were a zone team, your RPO isolation game would occur on the back side of your zone scheme. So for us, we have to lock the front side of our, of our Veer scheme, which means our tackle has number two on the line of scrimmage. Our guard has number one on the line of scrimmage, depending on where he is. All right, if number one on the line of scrimmage is inside, our guard's going to work with the center back to the backside inside linebacker. And then uh, we're going to be locked, all right, over here with the three technique and the five technique. So if you get a three and a five and you're covered here, all right, and this guard is not working with the center, then with the three and the five on the backside of the play, we already have hat placement and leverage based on where the play's going. We want to make sure that those two players don't cross our face. All right, we set the, uh, the sniffer away from the RPO. Um, we can set the sniffer to the RPO, but the reason I set him away sometimes is because if I think I can get the three technique where the sniffer is, then when I run the isolation on the backside, I'm getting the isolation at the, at, at the bubble and, as opposed to the three technique side. Because we're a tempo team, we will run the isolation play at the three technique if we have it called and that's the way the front is. But if I know how the team is going to line up and I can get them to put the three technique to where we put our sniffer, then I can put the sniffer strong, bring him back to isolate weak so that we can run the play at the bow. All right, so six on six in the box, seventh guy on the front side, all right, is pre-snap access. So if he's somewhere where we feel like he's going to make plays in the run game, we can't block him. We've got to throw the ball outside, all right, to our access throws. We've got to be able to do something to get him to remove himself from the box. Now this becomes a post-snap RPO, which means we are post-snap reading the eighth guy in the box, which is usually going to be a second, third level player, all right, it might be, if it's a weak safety and he's down, you consider him a second level player. If he's high, you consider him a third level player. Either way, it's going to be that weak side, what we think is that eighth player or that weak side support player there, all right, and we are going to run three different concepts, all right, with the X receiver on the single side. We run a glance, all right, skinny kind of post behind him. We run a speed out, and then off the glance, we run a corner out, which we call a money concept. All right, so this is our single side veer isolation scheme, all right, and it is with the glance route, the speed out, and then the glance corner or what we call money concept. All right, guys, we're going to jump into some of these RPOs now. This is our single side isolation RPOs, all right, working off of our veer isolation scheme. All right, so in the first one here, you're going to see, all right, this is, it's basically 4-2-5 team. Here it is to the uh, twin side here, all right. Our isolation is going to come to the top side. So that's going to be what we think is the extra fitter. All right, so this is going to be right now pre-snap, taking a look at that guy to see if he can fit or not because we should have access throws. Our splits are not very good here to the bottom. They should be wider. This is our access side. And then the top side is the RPO side. We're running the glance. And then again, our five linemen and our sniffer have these one, two, three, four, five, six defenders in the box, and the quarterback has to handle seven and eight. All right, so there it is with the glance route there. All right, so here's the end zone shot of it. So you can see, because we're a tempo team, this was right after a 30-yard pass play for us. We came right back to this. We actually called this play with the three technique set to the sniffer, and we ran the isolation to the same side, which means we have to run it at the three technique. So what that means is the guard and the tackle now have to do a good job of rooting out the three and the five. Don't let them cross your face. And then we're running the ISO back in here on this backer, and we're working a double from there back to that backer there. All right, so you can see on the double, guard turns his shoulders. So now he's going to lose track of where the will is. All right, so that run scheme right here isn't going to be the greatest, but they've got the extra defender triggering in the run. So we end up pulling and throwing a glance behind it. All right, so it's really not the end of the world. Now, if that would have been a give and that kid didn't fit, we probably would have been in a little bit of trouble. All right, so here it is out again. Again, out of uh, this is the glance out of split backs. We got the two receivers down here, all right, into the boundary. They have chose to play their free safety to the boundary and their split field concepts. They've chose to play their weak safety down, try and get them in the fit. So right away when our quarterback looks, this is pre-snap here, and then this is going to be post-snap up there. So when our quarterback looks pre-snap, all right, the defender is playing outside of the number two receiver. On the bottom here, this to me should be takeoff 
for an access throw, all right? And then we should probably be running five-step hitch for the access throw to the slot, all right? And these guys to the bottom, this is game two. We don't do the greatest job with this access side, all right? But the quarterback isn't even going to look to the access side because the apex defender is outside of number two. So with the apex defender outside of number two, as a quarterback, I'm already telling him, don't go to the access side. This guy can't be part of the fit. Don't worry about him. Now let's go to our RPO because we know we have six blocks. So again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six players that are blocked by our five linemen and one of our backs. So it's six on six. The extra guy to the front side or the excess side is outside of two, can't get involved. Okay. So the RPO goes post snap on that safety who triggers down. And there's your glance throw over the top. Now, I don't like this glance is too far across the field for me. I don't like our split to the top. Our split should be a little bit wider. All right. And then the glance ends up coming almost back down to the bottom hash mark where that safety is sitting. All right. So this is game two. We had to kind of straighten this out. All right. A little bit. I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of our splits and spacing there. But all right. Let's take a look at it from the end zone shot. All right. So again, what's the first thing we're telling the quarterback? Pre snap, you got to look out here. You got to look away from the RPO side. So as soon as that defender gets outside leverage of two, we know that we're not worried about him being in a run fit. So now we know that we've got six on six in the box. There's a six man box. So now we know that we've got six in the box. We've got numbers. All right, so base block the three and the five. This is bad. The guard already has the three blocked by, um, with, with leverage by alignment. Just put your inside foot in the ground and turn that into a base block. Inside foot in the ground, base block. Don't let those guys cross your face. You can see here, game two, not great on a double. All right, this double is supposed to be working hip to hip. Flat, you shouldn't be able to see any color. Back to that, back or there. And then we should have an ISO block there. So, again, six on six in a box, we've got everybody blocked. All right, there is the guy that we can't block in the RPO scheme. So, now that that's the guy that we can't block, we're reading him. And, again, you can see the quarterback. This is a post-snap ride and decide. Quarterback pull, and then throw the glance. Now, I will tell you that we work on this. What I don't like is when the quarterback pulls the ball, I'd like to see him eject the ball right here when he pulls off, the, off of this. I've seen too many balls get grabbed by the tailback, and then the ball on the hip gets knocked on the ground. I'd rather see this quarterback throw his forearm right across the 22 of the back so that the ball gets ejected away from him. That's an old-fashioned option ride and decide uh, type of deal where if you're going to give the ball, you, you rub your, your back hand, comes across the, the stomach of the ball carrier, all right, so that he feels that you're going to give it. If you were going to eject the ball, your forearm goes in his back, and when that happens, if you look at my watch on the screen, when I eject the ball, look how my watch goes away. So now here, when he pulls this ball, I don't like the fact that this could get grabbed or caught on the hip right there. All right, but all in all ends up being six points, not too bad. All right, so here what you're going to see is now uh, the change up to where when we get off coverage or maybe heavy inside off coverage, we're going to run speed out to the top with the same ISO RPO. And now what you can see is with the fullback set to the bottom, we get the three technique to the bottom. So now we can run the ISO back to the bubble side, which we talked about when we drew it up on the board, how you can dictate where the bubble is and where you want to run the ISO to by setting the sniffer where you want it. All right, so there's the speed out. Again, that's one of our best players, so getting him the ball in space is pretty good for us. Take a look at it from the end zone. All right, so you can see here on the backside we're locked. So we've already got the three and the five blocked by alignment with leverage. So this guard right here, really all you got to do is just keep your helmet inside. All he's got to do is keep his helmet inside there. The double needs to work from this guard and center. The double needs to work from here back to that backer. All right, this is the guy right there. That's the ISO backer. That right there is the RPO. So again, this tackle, don't let that guy cross your face, we're fine. Here's the ISO backer right here. But again, what you can see is that's the body that we'll never be able to block. So you got two choices. Either you put your tail back on him and tell him he's got to make a miss, or now in the RPO game with option football, you just throw off of that. Okay, so again, 
Slow mo. We got six on six in a box. Three five block. Double ISO. Easy throw out in space. All right. Easy read for the quarterback. That's the quarterback's read. He's triggering down that far inside. Ball gets pulled. Throw the out cut. And then because we have a good player out there, it ends up being, all right, 13, 14-yard gain. Now, just a coaching point for your receivers at this point. Once he makes this guy miss, let's get out of bounds and don't go back in here because now look at the amount of helmets that are coming. And now when this guy comes back in here because he's a player trying to make plays, that's when you get, all right, helmets on the ball, fumbles. All right, now here's the next adjustment that we make uh, to the single side isolation RPO. When we think we're getting some teams that are going to close the middle and play a one high safety, we go to what we call a glance corner concept. So because we run so much of the glance, these corners get used to seeing the glance and they kind of overplay the glance. But then some teams like to play us in one high. And when they do that in one high, what happens on the glance route, all right, again, you can see our splits are a little bit tight here. I'd like this guy to be out here, all right? So our splits are a little bit tight. Got to do a better job coaching that. But on the, uh, on the glance route, when it's one high, a lot of times that safety in the middle becomes a factor. So what we do is when we get one high with the same eight-man box, we block the same ISO scheme, and now we run glance corner. We call it money, all right? So what you're going to see here, the wide shot's the only shot I got, so I've got to kind of draw it. What you're going to see here is an eight-man box. Here's pre-snap. All right, that's pre-snap, trying to figure out to the access side if that guy can be involved in a run fit or not, and does the quarterback like his matchup side? If he gets a press corner, do we like the fade ball? If he gets off coverage, do we like the hitch? All right, so there's your, there's your pre-snap right there. All right, so again, here's your one, two, three, four, five, six defenders that are five linemen and, and sniffer have to block. All right, and then standing here very close to the box, that is the apex player that has dropped down, number 16 right there. That's the guy we're reading in the RPO that we can't block. So look where he is. So he's already down somewhere, all right, somewhere almost outside the five technique where he's in position that we know we can't block him. Now, if he decided to get up here and get up the field, He's probably a non-factor in the play, but as far as the numbers are concerned, the quarterback knows we cannot block that guy. So you can see right here, all right, that is the extra player sitting right there that we would never be able to block. So the quarterback's going to read off that. So the quarterback knows that's going to be a pull. And now you get the glance corner of the money route. And again, that was one of RX was one of our best players. Obviously, we're just running our scheme the way we want to run our scheme, all right? And all we're doing is we're putting the ball in the hands of one of our best players. Okay, so again, this is a six-on-six -six scheme for us, something we teach to the quarterback all the time. If we have six and they have six, then we're good in the concept. you got to find seven and eight. got to find seven pre-snap. you got to find eight post-snap. Eight here makes it real easy for us. Our number one RPO concept for us is glance. So now when everybody knows that we like to run glance and they kind of try to overplay the glance a little bit, if we get one high off coverage, we're either going to throw speed out like I just showed you or we're coming back to the money concept, which is going to be the glance corner. All right, so again, that's one of our better players. ISO scheme, get the ball in space, change it up. So now that you can't just see, all right, the glance stuff, you can't see. All right, to the single side, you can't say that we run all the same RPOs or it's always going to be glance. So now you've got glance, you've got speed up, and you've got the glance corner out. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll check you all next time. Remember, guys, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll see you next time.